What's going on, YouTube family? Tio here, Simplistic Fishing, back at you tonight. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying all these lake breakdowns. We just kicked off Possum Kingdom. I'm right in the middle of Toledo Bend, which is what we're going to continue on tonight. And then if you missed it, we also did a recap of the tournament that we did on uh, Lake Palestine. I didn't do the tournament. I was the captain. Uh, but the boys did for their high school tournament and had a top 10 finish. So kind of give you a recap there, tell you a little bit about how the fishing went for us, uh, the areas that we fished, what was successful, what wasn't. So if you didn't get a chance to watch those videos, definitely check them out. Tonight, we're going to keep on going through Toledo Bend. This one's going to take us a while. I told you guys that. So I'll keep rotating this one with Possum Kingdom. And then after that, we're going to move on to Lake Whitney. That's the next, next lake. Uh, that I have on the list, but let's go ahead and finish this one up. We still got a couple more videos left on Toledo Bend on the Googler side, and then we've got to switch over and do the offshore stuff. That'll probably take at least two or three videos, and then we'll wrap this one up. So let's go ahead and jump back in. We're starting at Highway 6. That's where we stopped that last time. We're going to go north of that on the Louisiana side and probably finish that entire Louisiana side of the lake, and then the, uh, the next video will start up at the top on the west side, the Texas side, and work our way all the way back down. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. As I mentioned in the opening video, we were gonna start on the east side from Highway 6. Highway 6 is about right here in the middle of the lake. If I pull this back, you'll see that Highway 6 is about right here. So we got about, almost halfway up. I would say maybe a little bit more than halfway up. Um, there's not as many markings when we get up past Highway 6. That's why I believe, I think I can do all of this in the video tonight. But if you missed the other videos, we did start down here at the very southern end of the lake on the southeast side. We worked our way all the way up to Highway 6. And like I said today, we're going to work away north of Highway 6. Now, if you've seen any of my videos before, um, you'll know what I'm talking about here. But if you haven't, just want to point this out to you on the left hand side when you look at the kml file you're going to notice i have everything organized over here on the left hand side so if you just wanted to look at offshore spots for this lake you could you could just uncheck everything and then just look at your offshore hot spots uh, maybe you weren't an offshore guy and you just wanted to look at you know things that i found on google earth you could definitely put those in there or maybe you were just on a, a ramp and a rock pattern and that's all you wanted to focus on you could do that too so lots of different ways you can uh organize these points, export them out, all that good stuff. And don't forget, you can go out to my site, simplisticfishing.com, and you can pick up either the digital file or you can get an SD card for your for your graph. So we support all of them, Lawrence, Garmin, and Hummingbird. And then I can also get you the, uh, the digital file as well for, uh, for Google if you want that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start up here just north of Highway 6. I've unchecked I'm pretty much going to check everything, but I'm going to uncheck the offshore stuff. And the reason why is because we're going to come back later in a couple videos and really talk about the offshore stuff, talk about why I marked them offshore and why I think those are going to be uh, primary hotspots in the lake. So let's go ahead and just uh, let's go start here. When we're moving up here, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to show you the picture. Now, this picture is actually pretty good. Um, this lake does not fluctuate very much. So you'll notice when I move this back it's not gonna make that big a difference. In fact, 2021, it actually looks lower there than it did in the other one. So let's go ahead and just leave it there and just show you what we kind of found here. And then when we get back in those creek channels, I might need to move it back down to 2014 to, uh, to see what we found. So uh, on this one, really just some rocks right off this point, you can see they're just barely submerged uh, in the water. When the water's up, I'm sure they're submerged a little bit more. Um, this was obviously in January, so the water's gonna be pulled down uh, quite a bit. We've also got some additional rock right here off of this point that you could fish. Now, if we look at this when the water's a little bit higher, let's see if I can get a better image. You'll notice that some of these rocks are, are in the water. They're just not in the water very much. So I'll go ahead and keep it here on 2012 and we'll just keep moving up. So again, you know, didn't have too much stuff to mark here because a lot of this stuff is so shallow. We just couldn't mark it, but we did mark the areas where there was rock. We're hoping that rock, you know, moves on into the uh, into the water. Now out here, I really like this rock. You can tell something's going on here. And if you look really closely, you'll notice that there is a river channel that's right out here. And I'm sure what's happened is that this swing over time has created some erosion somewhere in this area. And you're actually seeing it right here because you can see that that water has actually eroded all of the dirt off and you're actually getting a hard spot there or rocks. 
So from what I can tell here, there's clearly rock right here, but I would definitely go out and I would check out this area out in here, out away from the dock and see what else you could find. You're probably going to find some brush piles and things like that as well when you get this close to this river channel. So you could have some brush piles up in here. Uh, you may have some on the other side. Just check out this whole area. I really, really like it. I also like the fact that it's a main lake point. Anytime you get around a main lake point and you got some rock, I mean, that's two great things you got going together, right? You're always just looking for all those patterns and seeing how you can combine them together. So anyways, I'll quit rambling, but if I was a betting man, I'd say there's some fish off of that point for sure. All right, so then moving on down, uh, just another little point here that had some rock on it. Not a ton, right? A lot of this is really shallow, but we do have some rock here and a little bit of debris that you could check out. And then as you move further back in here, I didn't see too much back in these little pockets that I could really point out for you, but there is some additional rock over here. And again, you know, if you've been watching these breakdowns, there's not a ton of rock on this lake. So if you got on this little shallow rock pattern, you might be able to do some serious damage in a tournament because most people aren't going to think, I'm going to go to Toledo Bend and fish rocks. That's just not probably something that you hear very much. So anyways, check it out. See if you can get on that rock pattern if you can. That can be a great pattern. I, it's worked very well for me over the years with shallow diving crankbaits. I've uh, done well with spinnerbaits and chatterbaits around the rocks. But really my, my two primary methods if I'm fishing rocks is I'm going to, I'm going to put on a square bill and I'm going to put on a shaky head if they don't want the moving bite. But uh, square bill is probably my number one go-to when I get around those shallow rocks. So you've got some of those here. You've got some here off this point again. Again, when you get rocks on a point, you know that's a good combination. You've got a ramp back in here as well. You guys have heard me talk about the ramp pattern. If you haven't, you know, definitely try this out. Try the ramp pattern out someday. Just go to the personal ones. Don't go to the main ramps. Go to all the personal ramps and fish those. Fish the rocks around the edges of those ramps if there are any rocks. And if there aren't any rocks, then literally just fish the ramp, especially on the very end of it. So check that out and see if you have some success there. Some more rock here off of the point here that you can see. Um, another ramp going on down in here. This stuff's really interesting. I, you know, and someone had messaged me in a couple videos ago. I think it was the first video for Toledo Bend and told me there is no more grass on Toledo Bend. So you're going to see as we break this down, we did have this marked as like a grassy area, place that we thought would be a high potential area. But it is possible that this grass is not there anymore at all. So I'm actually going to uncheck all the grass icons because I don't want to mislead you guys thinking that you're going to go back there and find the grass and all of a sudden there's nothing there. But if you are, uh, if you do live on this lake or live by this lake or have been out to this lake uh, within you know the last three or four months, I would really like to know, is there grass still in the lake? Uh, maybe it's just only in isolated pockets and you don't want to share that information, but I at least just like to know if there's grass or not. Um, all the images that I show all the way up to 2021 show that there's actually grass in this lake. But uh, from what I understand, they have killed that grass off and it does not exist. I and mean, if you look here, this is January, so it's hard for me to tell if there's really grass or not. But, you know, the next image I have is all the way back to 2015. You can see there is still some grass in, on 2015, 2012. It's even more prevalent. So anyways, I'll quit rambling about that. But let me know, guys. Let me know what this lake's like. I don't think I'm going to be able to go down there anytime soon. So as you move over here, one thing I want to point out and I, I didn't mark it and I should have, but you've got this bridge that's right here, but look right behind you and you've got an old roadbed that goes right underneath here. So check out that old roadbed as well when you're fishing around this little creek channel and the, uh, you know, the bridge in that area. Also over here on this island, this little island's got rock all around it. So it's like it's got a you know pretty soft top with some brush and stuff like that. But then if you look really closely, all around the edges of it is rock. So that might be you know, a potential place you want to check out. Um, as you move back in here, just got another bridge and creek channel and stuff to fish around. You got an old ramp that's back here. I mean, these are these are really risky spots to go fishing at, right? Because it, if you might waste your whole time just getting back here for nothing. So I don't know if I'd spend too much time messing around in here, but, you know, if it was spring or just the right time and the fish were really shallow and, and were pushing those fish back as far as they could possibly push them, I may entertain the idea of trying to go back here and see if there's something back there. Also, there could be brush piles around this, right? It looks like someone's personal dock, so they could have put some brush piles and things in here as well. All right, so I'm going to have to speed up. I think I'm talking too much on this breakdown, so I'm going to speed up just a little bit to so make sure we get this one done, at least on the Louisiana side. we got some more ramps in here that you'll see. Um, some additional rock, just real shallow rock, right? This is, again, 
This one's running up against the seawall. When the water's up, it, the water will get up to that seawall, so that will be covered. So you, you have a little bit of chance there to fish around some rock. You've got some more uh, more ramps. You've got three different ramps right in this area. Another one over here off the point. This point looks interesting, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it when we talk about the offshore stuff. And if you watch my Richland Chambers breakdown, uh, or if you've ever heard me talk about Richland Chambers, you'll know that one of the best patterns that I like to run on Richland Chambers is running all these what we call stick-ups. Uh, at least I'm just going to call them stick-ups. I don't really even know what they are. Someone told me what they were one time. I think they were willow bushes that grew in when the lake was really, really low. And then obviously the lake floods them out. So for, for my terms, layman terms, country boy terms, whatever you want to call me, I just call them stick-ups. Now right here are great stick-ups because you're coming off of this main lake point. This main lake point too has a really flat top. So I'm probably going to hit it on the offshore stuff, but this little group of stick-ups right here, you definitely want to go check those out. I really like how they're positioned and how they're set up. Uh, fall would be a good time to hit them. Spring would be a good time to hit them. A lot of good times to hit them. So definitely take a look at those stickups right there. They really stand out. They're unique. There's none of them like that in the area. I'm going to stop talking about them because it's like I'm so excited over just stickups. So moving on up, we got some more rocks right here around this little uh, seawall. We got some more rocks over here by this dock. We got ramps galore coming back in here. You'll see them all in there. And then right off of this point, let me show you guys where I'm at. So remember, we came up from six. I'm going into this little pocket here, this cove, not really little. But we got some more rocks that are over here. You'll see them right off the edge of these points. Definitely good areas to fish. That dock looks good, too. It's kind of isolated all by itself off the point. So that, can, that has a really good potential to be a good dock. <clears throat> we talked about that ramp that was back there. As we move further up here, we've just got some rocks that are going around this point. Nothing too crazy. It's not like it's a bunch of riprap or anything like that. But you should be able to find a little bit of rock, at least off the edge of that point. And then moving back here, didn't see too much back in here that we could point out for you guys until we got a little bit further back in here. And then we found a little bit more rock right there off the edge of that seawall. Again, those seawalls are pretty good. I've talked to you guys about that in other videos as well. But you can get on that seawall pattern. And it's all about position of the boat. If you come up to the boat with two guys, you come up to the seawall and you got two guys and you're throwing exactly, you know, right at it. Um, you know, vertically right at it somewhat, then you know, that's not a very effective way to fish it. But if you can line your boat up and get parallel or horizontal with the seawall, so basically your boat's going to be facing, you know, this way. If you do that and you have one buddy get on the back, if you got two guys, two guys fishing, have him flip off the back, just flip as close as he can to that wall and fish. And then if you're up on the front, you go to a shallow dive and crankbait and you get as close to get the boat as close as you can to that wall and then just pound that wall, pound right up by that wall. And you can even tweak your little uh, crankbait to where uh, whichever direction you are facing the wall that your crankbait actually has a tendency to go and hit the wall and bang off of it. Um, if you do that at certain times of year, that is a really fun pattern to run and you can have a lot of fun with it. And the guy in the back of the boat doesn't actually get screwed because you're parallel to the bank you know, usually he's hosed, but because you're you're just using that square bill, he'll have enough time to where he can just sit there and flip that seawall and get as close to that seawall as he can. He'll pick up all the ones that didn't want your crankbait. All right, so keep on moving on. We got another ramp that's down in here. As you move further up, there's some more. I thought there was a ramp there, but there's not. There is a bridge up here you could fish around, so definitely take a look. You guys heard me talk about bridges. You got to fish them all. Also, moving up here off of this point, Got some more rock that's up here. Mark that for you guys. You can see it's real shallow. So a lot of times it's probably not going to be in the water. That looks like an awesome house, by the way. But uh, anyways, check that out. If you can get that rock in the water, that could be a good, good little spot. As we move down here, just a ramp that's in here. You got a little bit of a creep channel, but we didn't mark it because it wasn't even really significant enough to show you guys. And then as we move further up here, just another ramp up here. Again, not seeing too much to mark for you guys. It's not saying there's not good stuff to fish here. There just wasn't stuff here that we could point out uh, from a Google Earth standpoint. But when we get a little bit further up here, we get a really nice looking creek channel. So we went ahead and marked that one for you. You can see here, it has a real good swing up against the bank. So this bank line, basically from that point to almost that point, but really you could, I'd say just fish it to that point. That little stretch of bank line right there is gonna be way higher percentage 
than if you were to go over here and fish this bank line or even fish right here. You know, that's not going to be as high a percentage area as just moving down just a little bit and putting more of your focus right here where that creek channel is really slamming up against the bank line there. So take that, take a look at that. You're also going to look at all your bins. So all your bins where that makes a big, strong bin, you're going to want to take a look at those too. And you can see here where he's got this creek channel marked for you guys all the way back. So let's go ahead and pull that back out and let's keep on moving. Now, as we go further up this cove on the northern side, you got another good looking creek channel here. So we marked that for you as well. Good bridge to fish around. Real good looking, good looking creek channel uh, to fish around for sure. And then really take a look right here around this little hump that's out here too. If that thing gets submerged or goes underwater, even if it's not submerged, fish up around it because you can see the creek channel comes up and hits it. It swings against it and then kind of bounces off of it. So definitely take a look at that. We've got some ramps here as well you could take a look at. Just some junk back in here that you could fish around. You probably have some creek channels in there that you could fish, but we we couldn't mark all the creek channels because we would overload your graph. So we had to be somewhat selective, and that one just wasn't defined enough to uh, to mark for you guys. We got lots of ramps. Ramp here, ramp, ramp, ramp. I'm not going to zoom into the ramps just to save us some time, but I am going to zoom into these rocky areas. So right here, off this little point, you can see you've got some pretty good rock in here. Actually missed a little personal ramp there too. You got some flooded timber. So maybe right here around this point and maybe right around this little dock look definitely looks interesting. Now we've got some more ramps. As I talked about before, you got rock off this point. Again, main lake point, not maybe not main lake, but kind of main channel here on the cove. Uh, but definitely want to take a look at that with that rock being out there. Uh, definitely an area that you would want to put some focus on. As we move a little bit further up, just found a couple other areas with some rock. There was some rock in here around these stickups too, which looks really interesting. So definitely look right in here. Again, you know, that's going to be a seasonal thing. They got to be pushing back, but if they're pushing back or they're staging and getting ready to go all the way back, that could be a really good hot spot to look at. You got lots of ramps in there, guys. I think we got, what, five, six, seven, seven ramps, if I'm counting right. So lots of ramps you could fish back in there around those docks. You've also got some rock that's out here off of this point. So you'll see it right here. I zoom in kind of dirt, 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 and then finally you get some rocks. So even when the water's up, uh, let's see if it's up here. Even when it's up, it is, those rocks are submerged, but you'll be able to tell where those rocks are because just look for those two trees. If you find those two trees, the rock is literally parallel with them. So it's right there by them. Guys, I see this spot right here being a really good spot. Definitely an area that I would go look at. Moving up here, you just got the rocks around the bridge. You got the bridge here. And I don't know if we had... We did have a creek channel back here. This is one of the ones that we wanted to, wanted to go ahead and mark, but Hummingbird only allows us to do 50 tracks. So we have to say, we basically break down the entire lake and then we go back and we look and we say, what are our 50 best tracks that we have? And, <clears throat> and then we go with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if we have too many, then we just break them down by these points. So that's what we've done here. This creek channel wasn't defined as well as some of the other ones. So we went ahead and just marked it with the points. But you can see here it comes up, swings down, back up, and then kind of goes back up in here into this pocket. So uh, definitely could be a good area to take a look at. Not as defined as some of the other creek channels we found. But if you're, you know, if you're limited to fishing this area, definitely would go up there and fish that for sure. We got some ramps again, lots of ramps. Got some rock off of this point as well, right here by this dock. So you can check that out. That one looks like it could have some potential for sure. And then we get back up here. We just got another bridge kind of hidden back in here with some rocks around, you know, the br bridge inlet. And then we also have a ramp that's way back in there. Not sure if you'd want to go back there unless someone said, hey, that ramp is money because that one's way back in there for sure. All right. So then moving on up here, we've got some more rocks getting out closer towards the main lake. You've just got some more rocks right here. You'll see them right along this bank line. It's a pretty good little rocky area. And there were some more rocks back here as well that you can see. Now that lay down, if that lay down can get in the water or if it's in the water, that could be a pretty good lay down to fish. And you got some rocks right beside it too. That looks like it could have some pretty good potential for sure. You crappie fishermen might even want to go back in there and check out that little brush pile because that one could be a good little spot to fish. We got a lot of ramps, guys. So ramps, 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 lots of ramps. Let's go ahead and look at these rocks that are right over here, though. This one looked interesting. I don't know what the heck this is. You've got rocks here along the edge. Got all this concrete. 
and then rock here as well. So I would just fish all of it. Probably this main lake side is going to be your better side, but uh, I, I would definitely fish all of it for sure. Then moving up here, we got ramps, lots and lots of ramps. Got some just little scattered areas of rock, right? It's only when it's by these seawalls. Sometimes you'll find it. So we found some there. Found some a little bit further up as well. You'll find some right in here. Some more rock. Again, just, just little scattered areas of rock. Most of them are all along these seawalls. Um, so they could be tough, especially if, if the water is not up. Some of these rocks are going to be completely out of the water. Lots of ramps again. Just ramps galore. Let me show you guys where we're at now because we're making our way up. We're in the last big kind of finger that comes out of this thing, and then we're going to truck our way up to the north. So uh, as we come up here, just finding a couple different areas of that rock again. Uh, some rock here around this point. That one looks good. That being more of a main lake point. This one looks good as well. Looks like this one might actually have a little bit of a drop. So go check it out. If you do have a drop there, that's going to be really good. You've got lots of ramps. Ramps, 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 ramps back here. And then when we get further back up here, finally get into a pretty decent little creek channel up here. So come up here and take a look at this. you got a real good creek channel here. You can see where we're swinging around all the time. And it just kind of swings and weasels its way all the way back up here into this bridge. So I would fish all of that, especially right here around this bridge. See where the creek channel swings up against this land right here? That looks like it could be really interesting. Even getting back in here and fishing some of this could be interesting. Um, anyways, go take a look at that. It looks pretty shallow, so be careful. Um, but if you can get a boat back in there, I would definitely go back in there and look at that. I love getting up in that shallow stuff, uh, flipping stuff and, and just throwing spinner baits and stuff. That's just kind of, you know, really like that style of fishing. All right, so moving up here, we got a couple more ramps. And then as we move down, we got a little bit of rock right here off this point. So again, if you're on that rock pattern, it's not everywhere, but you know where they're at because I've got a mark for you. So you could have a huge advantage there of your competition if this rock thing is working out. You've got some more rock right in here that we've marked for you. This point looks like it could have some rock off of it, but if not, just move back here where this, where this hard spot is and you'll find the rock. And then moving on down, just a bunch more ramps and then this one little point right in here that has some more rock off of it as well. And I like this one because it's more like a saddle, right? You've got your little hump here. You got rock. I think it's rock. It could just be debris, but you got a nice little saddle going on here as well. So regardless of what that is, I would definitely fish in that area, around that area, see if you can find anything or pick anything up um, because that little saddle is there and you got some pretty good contours going on in that area. So here we've just got a lot of ramps. You got the north side Toledo Bend uh, State Park ramp that's there as well. And then as we move further up, I didn't see a ton of stuff, right? And neither did Landon. Landon actually helped break this lake down. In fact, he broke down the majority of it. Uh, but I didn't see anything up in here. Just kind of not a lot of stuff for us to be able to mark for you. Did have some ramps and things, but we're going to find some rock here in just a minute. So hold on and I'll show it to you. Got more ramps back in here. No real like defined creek channels. I guess you kind of have one there. It's a little bit hard to follow or to map out. But I think if you go back in here, you're going to pretty much know where that creek channel is, especially if you still have all this cover that's back there. As we move further up in here, just some pretty good spots just to go, you know, frogging and stuff like that. This is, this is an awesome lake. Uh, as we get up in here, finally find some stuff. Uh, found some rocks right in here. And amazingly enough, there's not even a lot of laydowns on this lake. You know, if you look back at the uh, all the things that we mark, you're not going to see laydown very often. A lot of it's just rock or creek channel or ramps. So you got a ramp here as well. Check that out. And there's some more rock up here too. Let me show you guys. These little pockets look interesting. No good real, no real good solid creek channels for us to, to mark for you. So we didn't really put anything in there. And then when we get up here, we got some more ramps you could check out. And then here are these little spots of rocks. So if you were stuck up here and all you could fish is this area, you could definitely just fish these ramps and these rocks, see what you could find. And then, of course, you know, if just beating the bank with a frog or something like that might, might do the trick as well. But this lake looks, again, looks really awesome. You got a couple more ramps up here. And then right in here, we're getting to the very top. Let's say that you were up here at the very top. Obviously, you want to focus on that river channel. But if you had to uh, fish in this area, you could definitely hit this little area right in here. Because you've got like three or four spots, actually you've got like six or seven spots where you've got rocks. So all these docks right here have, have rocks behind them. You've also got a decent little creek channel over here that you can see that we went ahead and marked for you guys. You could fish up in there. really like that turn right there. 
You got another ramp there, and then here's where you got more rocks. So you got this right here, which is a pretty decent little ledge, that man-made ledge that's been made with some rock behind it. <clears throat> so you could fish that, and then you could move up here and then just fish these different little areas of rock. Kind of the same thing we saw on the other side, just not as not as big. So you got rock here, you got rock in here as well, and you've also got some rock here back behind this dock. So lots of good stuff there to, uh, to take a look at. And then if you move a little bit further up, you're going to start seeing the same type thing, right? You got the rock right along the bank line. There may be a seawall there. It's kind of hard to tell, but you definitely got some rock there. You got some around that dock too. You got a little bit here around this dock. And then up here, you've got the same type thing as well. And that, I believe, takes us almost to the north side. We're about as far north as we can get. We got three more ramps to look at up here. And then the last thing I want to show you guys is going to be right here, just some rock along the seawall. So if you came up here again and wanted to fish that seawall, that seawall has got some pretty decent rock around it that looks really interesting. So that takes us up. Actually, it doesn't. I lied to you. I'm going to go one more up, show you this ramp. That'd be the last ramp that you could fish up here. And then when you get up here, really what you want to do is just follow that river channel. If, you, if you're up here and you're fishing this huge flat that's up here, whatever you want to call it, uh, the arm of the lake, however, however you want to call it. If you're stuck up here fishing, I would just go out here and see what you can find around this channel. Anywhere where this channel touches or makes a big turn, that's what you're going to want to look at. So right here, you got a pretty big turn going on right here. If you come here, you got a pretty big turn as well. You got a real good one going on right here. So all of this right in here would be good, this whole area right here. And then you just want to kind of follow it down and just say, hey, if it turns, and it makes some funky turn or something like that, you want to take a look at it, maybe right in there where it makes that little turn. So anyways, just take a look at that. That wraps us up for the video tonight. That covers us for the entire Louisiana side for Toledo Bend, and then we hit the river right in the middle. So our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here on the north side. We'll start up here at the very north, and we're just going to work our way back down the Texas side, all the way back down until we get back down to the, to the dam. So we'll see what we can uncover, see how many videos that takes us. I'm thinking probably two, maybe three more videos. Then we're going to switch over. We're going to talk about the offshore hotspots. So until next time, guys, make sure you go out and check out SimplisticFishing.com to pick up your digital files or your SD cards for your graphs. And until next time, I hope you catch your PB. Take it easy, guys.